So I've always said it's a practical spirituality. It's not like it's not like there's anything that we need to do in form, but it's just as we keep asking the questions and we go deeper into the spirit, we pray to the spirit to heal our mind. We pray to the spirit to show us a unified perception. We pray to show us the world the way it really is, not in distortions. And it's a it's a very deep journey. And I know I've had the same thing. I've had when I was much younger, I had a, a twisted ankle. I had was taken to the hospital. I had uh, wonderful symbols of helpers helping me out with that, uh, putting a cast on my ankle. Uh, when I had a hernia operation, um, and again, wonderful symbols of doctors and nurses that have helped out. That's when this body was much, much younger, much earlier version of this body. But as I've learned to tune into the spirit, and I've flowed with the spirit, uh, the care and the attention for this body and the world has just decreased and decreased and decreased. Because the fulfillment of the spirit is everything. Uh, a tranquil, happy, open mind is what health is. So, when we start to look at things like the body, um, we've got a lot of unlearning to do because we've all been trained that bodies get sick. Bodies are limited. Bodies have symptoms. Um, that's what we've been talking about in the course group, you know, the whole idea of sick bodies versus well bodies. Hmm, it's interesting conditioning. For something that's actually neutral, it would be like going to see a uh, terms of endearment and coming home all sad and crying on the couch and having your spouse come up and say, "What's what's wrong? I just saw I just saw terms of endearment and I'm all shook up, crying. Oh, why are you sad? Well." Deborah Ringer died in the end. Deborah Ringer didn't die. She's, she's still alive. No, she died. I watched her die. Jack, Jack Nicholson was there, Shirley MacLaine. He's sad. He just cried all the way through the last part of the movie. Deborah Ringer died. No, she didn't die. If you did, Shirley MacLaine that Deborah Ringer is an actress. You know, Jack Nicholson's an actress. It's like, don't. Don't get caught up in believing that the movie's real. It's just a movie. Just actors. Well, guess what? This world is. It's an act. All the world's a stage and everyone must play their part. It's Shakespeare telling us about this act. You know, years ago. Decades ago. And, and when we start to take the act seriously, we start to believe the characters are real characters and the, the conditions are real conditions and so forth. It gets it's quite disturbing. We lose our peace very quickly when we give reality to images, when we give reality to shadows on the wall. Most people don't go to the movie theater and pay whatever, eight, ten, twelve, sixteen, twenty dollars, whatever, in order to just sit there and go, just a movie, just a movie. Just a movie, just a movie, just a movie. <laughs> you know, nobody wants that sixteen dollars to sit there for two hours going, it's a movie, it's a movie, it's a movie, it's a movie. <laughs> the spirit in our mind, the Holy Spirit has a message for our mind. It's a movie. <laughs> it's a movie, it's really a movie. And yet we go there and we we get all wrapped up with those images on that screen and those sounds that we're hearing through the body's ears, we get, oh, we get all twisted and contorted, and if it's, if it's a seemingly scary movie, our heart starts to pound. And if it's a happy, funny movie, we laugh and we laugh and we laugh. And if it's a sad movie, we cry lots of tears. And Jesus is like, mm, mm, mm. got it all wrong. His second lesson, he's got a workbook with 365 lessons. His second lesson out of 365, one for each day of the year, is I have given everything I see 
all the meaning it has for me. Who says it's a sad movie? My mind. Which, which is believing in the ego. Who says it's a happy movie? Who says it's a, it's a scary movie? I have given everything I see, all the meaning it has for me. So, you look at, here's the master psychologist that's transcended all forms of dependency and lack. He's, he is living in the abundance of nirvana and the kingdom of heaven. And he's saying, lesson number one, nothing, nothing I see means anything. Oh, what a nice one to start off with there. Go ahead and hit the home run on the first pitch. Uh, gee, what's number two? I've given everything I see, all the meaning it has for me. And it just goes on from there. It is a curriculum in undoing everything you think you think, and everything you think you know. It sounds very Buddhist, actually. Empty your mind of the contents of consciousness. It's, a, it's like a Buddhist curriculum. But it's a curriculum in, in emptying the mind. Sometimes people have said to me, what do you do when you start to get upset? And how do you train your mind? Well, I went through the whole Course in Miracles workbook lesson multiple times. But actually, some of the workbook lessons that I really liked to use as kind of like a little uh, mechanism whenever I would start to get upset, they said, well, you really are stuck in ego. What did you do? And I said, I would use lessons five, six, seven, eight from, from Jesus' workbook. Like the a, a four combo, five, six, seven, eight. If you're gonna if you're gonna hit the ego, hit him with five, six, seven, eight. Number five, I'm never upset for the reason I think. Ooh. Talk about a, a showstopper. Then I'm upset because I see something that's not there. Oh. In psychology we call that hallucination. <laughs> that's what number six is. Oh, very good. I'm never upset, ever, ever, ever upset for the reason I think. Hmm, that's very humbling. I, I'm upset because I see something that's not there. Oh, that's good. You're telling me I'm hallucinating. Thank you very much. And I'm upset uh, I see only the past is lesson number seven. I'm, I'm looking at the past. I'm just, all I'm doing is perceiving the past. And the past is filled with the tech thoughts and judgments and grievances. If you, some of you have heard of Eckhart Tolle, you know, Eckhart Tolle, the power of now. He's leading us into the present moment. He's not leading us into the past, and yet, Lesson number seven says, I see only the past. Then lesson number eight, my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. So I'm living in the past, and I'm upset because I'm living in the past. And he goes on from there. My thoughts are images I have made. A meaningless thoughts are showing me a meaningless world. A meaningless world engenders fear and meaning this world of gender sphere because I think I'm in competition with God. Oh my gosh, I woke up in the morning, I wasn't thinking that one. I wasn't thinking I'm, I'm in competition with God. Believe me, when I woke up, I was not thinking that thought. But the, the mind training is saying, oh yeah, you have an unconscious belief system in which you are trying to compete with the Creator and the source of everything. And you're trying to hold on to an identity and a world that God didn't create, and that's why you feel guilty. That's why you feel afraid. That's why you feel upset. That's why you feel distressed and uncomfortable. That's where you get annoyed and irritated, is because underneath it all, you're trying to maintain an identity that isn't real. Ooh, that's pretty heavy. That's pretty fundamental. Talk about fundamental. But again, this is practical, because if you had a being, we'll say, that has transcended time and space, has transcended all the, the duality, and just pure singular divine oneness, isn't it wonderful that that being 
loves you and cares for you so much that gives you a, a curriculum to work with, a textbook to learn truly what's going on in your mind. Thank you, God. Uh, thank you for the owner's manual. I, I, I would have loved it earlier, but I'm happy. <laughs> okay, so the body's 53. Thank you for the owner's manual. That helps. You know, if you've got a car that breaks down, isn't it good to have an owner's manual? You know, if you've got a mind that breaks down, <laughs> thank you for the owner's manual. And thank you for a curriculum that has a step-by-step -step mind training program that will lead me out of hell, not the burning fires of some eternal hell, but out of perceptual hell, to a healed mind. Oh, a peace of mind. Thank you for that curriculum. It is just a dream, the world you see.